Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Tacky Tuesday. If this is the first Tacky Tuesday you've ever tuned into, hi, my name is Stacy. I'm a nationally registered paramedic and Tacky Tuesday is just a series where we do an EMS cardiology lesson and we try to keep it under five minutes. And today we're gonna be talking all about Wellen syndrome. So what is Wellen syndrome? Wellen syndrome is a condition that typically indicates stenosis of the left anterior descending coronary artery, the LAD, and usually an occlusion of it as well. It is almost always a precursor to an MI or a cardiac arrest if something isn't done about it. Let's talk about some of the characteristics of Wellen syndrome. The T waves are typically deeply inverted or biphasic, usually in V2 and V3, but they can extend to V1 and V4 through V6. ST elevation, there can be very slight ST elevation, but it's it's not a requirement of this syndrome. It's believed that Wellen syndrome is manifested on a 12 lead because of the temporary reperfusion of the LAD. So for whatever reason, the reperfusion of the LAD has happened. So either the clot lysis has naturally occurred or EMS giving the patient or the patient giving himself or herself aspirin, it has given them a little bit of time and the angina has gone away, but Wellen syndrome is manifested on the 12 lead. What's usually bad in these cases is since the pain is subsided, the patients don't think they need to go to the hospital, so this may never ever be caught. Or they may be in severe pain when EMS picks them up. By the time they get to whatever hospital they're going to, the angina has gone away and now their 12 lead looks abnormal. And sadly, most of these patients will go on to have an anterior MI if this occlusion remains and is not fixed. The patient may or may not have elevated cardiac enzymes or troponin. Some signs and symptoms of Wellen syndrome. So typically they're already asymptomatic by the time this is noted on a 12 lead, but before that, they're usually preceded with MI symptoms. And MI symptoms, like we all know, chest pain, abdominal back or jaw pain, nausea and vomiting, dizziness or syncopal episodes, shortness of breath, could be diaphoretic, and fatigue. Like we talked about, Wellen syndrome is directly caused by stenosis and an occlusion of the left anterior descending artery. But those conditions can be caused by hypertension, smoking, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, arterial plaque, obesity, family history of cardiac issues, inactive or sedentary lifestyle, heart disease, metabolic syndrome, stress, just being old, drugs or stimulants, and autoimmune diseases. So basically everything that puts you at risk for an MI could also put you at risk for Wellen syndrome. And taking a look at Wellen syndrome on a 12 lead, you can see that there is T wave inversion from V1 to V6, but there's very prominent T wave inversion on V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. So how do we treat Wellen syndrome out in the 911 EMS setting? To be honest, we'll be lucky if we ever are able to see Wellen syndrome on a 12 lead. So 12 lead, vitals, oxygen, IV access, blood draw, and the main thing is just to treat your patient's complaint. So if your patient is complaining of chest pain, like I said, usually that's resolved before Wellen syndrome shows up on the 12 lead, but treat accordingly. Also, you want to report and transmit your findings to the hospital. And I just want you guys to take a quick look at type 1 and type 2. You'll notice in type 1 that there are deeply inverted T waves. And then on type 2, you're going to notice the biphasic T waves. As always, guys, treat your patient's complaint and get a good medical history. And that's about all I have for you guys today. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next week.